people went to him and said, you have to save this property. They said, no, we don't. And I heard that their plan was to, I mean, make it a storage facility. Annie Fisher was born in, in Boone County on December 3rd, 1867, likely in southern Columbia because her parents lived in a log cabin near Grindstone Elementary, which was down off of what we call Old 63, but it was 63 at the time. Her parents were Robert, known as Bob, and Charlotte Knowles. Um, they were married in the winter of 1865, according to a 1901 census that was done here in town on the black community. And then in the 1880 census, it was listed as Robert and Charlotte having seven children, two boys and five girls. She never had much of an education past the third grade because her labors were needed in the fields. So her salvation came when they called her to work in the house. And then he um, sent her to some of the white families in town to, as she put it, um, rock the cradle for white people. She um, would spend every spare moment she had in the kitchen where all the aromas and the smells were coming from. And they would let her, you know, um, kind of play and experiment in the kitchen. She would mix spices and sauces and they, she just found that she had a natural talent for cooking. Later, one of the families encouraged her to take the initiative and learn how to cook. So she began to help the cook peel potatoes and make biscuits. She tells a story of how the white folks used to give her clothes hand-me-down. She would work for the hand-me-down stuff, right? Um, and when she went to church in one of those outfits, somebody at church who she said really she thought loved her and she loved them, they made a comment. Good Lord, move back. Give Annie Fisher a plenty of room. Here she comes dressed like a peacock. She ought to know that the house of the Lord is no place for any such clothes as them. And she went home and she was very upset and before she went to bed, she asked the Lord to help her do something so that she could make money, so she could dress like regular people. She went on to work as a cook for various homes, mainly white families in Columbia. Uh, and she even worked for four years, probably in the 1890s based on the timeline, as the cook for the Sigma Alpha Epsilon fraternity at the University of Missouri. That's how her catering business was birthed because if they, there wasn't a party in Boone County of any status that Annie Fisher didn't have something to do with. People would change wedding dates, debutante dates, ball, I mean, everything so that Annie could accommodate them. Her biscuits were just famous. They were described as creamy, fluffy, and flaky. And she said that she usually charged 10 cents a dozen. And um, her beaten biscuits were so popular that people all over the United States who had been in school and stuff here would actually order them and she'd mail them to them. She was a phenomenal lady. She was the best. She found her niche and she made sure she was the best, the master at it. And uh, if you wanted the best, you had to find Annie Fisher, but you was gonna pay her. She used her money she started saving up when she first started cooking for other people and she um, bought a two-bedroom house over at Sixth and Park, over um, down, right off downtown. And um, she worked from there and she paid it off within 18 months of buying it with her money she earned from her business. And then it got too small, so she had that house moved back on the lot. And then she had a five-bedroom house built. And at the same time, she built, I think it was a whole lot around the house, and she built eight little houses that she um, rented out. And then the five bedroom house got too small. So around 1914, she um, built a brick house that was 14 rooms, 14 or 15 rooms. So, and that actually was still there till the 1960s when it got torn down for urban renewal. She built the house outside of town around 1920. And at one point she had bought the land from her parents. That's where her parents lived. And at one point she owned 85 acres out there. The rooms were just endless. That place had, I'd never been in a house that had so many rooms. So, yeah, that was uh, quite an establishment. It was an amazing house because she was the daughter of slaves, right? 
and here she had a 4,000 square foot second house. This is her second 4,000 square foot home. Now you know, that's just unheard of. I mean, in mid-Missouri, maybe, maybe in the east, but in mid-Missouri, that just, it, it just wasn't so. Well, he said, okay, let me tell you, it's gonna take a million dollars just to fix it. And that was after she told me 1.2 million to buy it. You're kidding me! And I said, I would, you know, get up. She said, if, I, if it was me, I would leave it alone because it sounds like a money pit to me. All I can say is I'm gonna do whatever I can to save the house. It was just a notable sight. Columbia said it was a notable site. Well, there's no value in that other than, isn't that nice? It's a nice, notable site. There's no energy or nothing you can do with that. So even though it was deemed a historical site in Boone County, there's no energy, there's nothing there either. They don't have any power. They couldn't save it, obviously. I got all the paperwork for that done. And then the point was to work on the, really the important thing, to get it on the National Register, which that never worked out. I was hoping it wouldn't be over, you know. According to her obituary, it wasn't a really very long one. Um, she was highly respected by white people and by the people of her own race, and she was famous as one of the best cooks in the state. Carter G. Woodson, he was a, um, an African-American historian who wrote about the black community. His 1933 book, The Miseducation of the Negro, he actually writes about Annie Fisher. He writes about how she learned cooking and took the initiative to come up with an invention to make her biscuits better, and then successfully made herself and her relatives independent. How much historical stuff do we have in this city for African Americans? Someone who, who went from nothing and made $10,000 baking biscuits, you know, at a penny for a dozen? That's a lot of money and a lot of biscuits. And, and eventually put her daughter through school, conservatories. I mean, she did all kinds of things. We need that just so the community can say, there is someone who made it big, not because somebody else fixed it or anything. It's just their hard work. And during a time, and she was a woman, and women didn't even get to do that. I mean, it was a miracle. It was really amazing. She's relevant uh, probably all the more because she succeeded during a time when black people just weren't successful. They really didn't have an opportunity or a chance. I pray that Columbia is able to actually save her legacy in more than uh, an old wives tale here and there. I've been told there are no pictures of her. But there's no pictures of her. Um, no pictures of her because they said they, don't, they really don't know what she looked like. What magazine was this? Was like, oh my God! Like I love her. Oh my. Okay. Oh, where? Do you know how long? Okay. You can keep that. I'll keep it. I'm not gonna have a fit. Yes, I am.